Hello and welcome to Ask Me About K-Pop, the essential guide for recent converts and season fans alike. My name is Shannon. And I'm Angelica. And welcome to the show. Today is one of those times where we just, I don't know, we're just going to hang out. You know, it happens every October. We love tradition. Um, And so October is the time of the year when our brain melts and we decide to just ramble into the microphone (laughs) and then call it an episode. Um, So in honor of that tradition, um, that's what we're doing today. That's what we're doing today, and I feel like a little bit, just a little bit guilty about it because I saw a very sweet discussion happening in the Discord um, about why people like our podcast so much, and one of the like reasons people kept bringing up is that it like is evergreen because we usually make like timeless historical sure. episodes, and we don't usually just talk about the news. So I feel a little bad about that. But also, you guys always get really excited when we just do these, like, <laughs> blabby episodes, I know, too, I was, so... I was feeling a little bit guilty about it as well, because it takes, like, no preparation. And also, <laughs> because I was like, oh, like, we always say, like, you know, your podcast should have a format. You shouldn't just be, like, talking into a microphone and out of your ass and, like... Well, that's what we're going to do today, y'all. But sometimes we have to. We do it every October, okay? I am sticking with the tradition defense. We started this, and so it must continue. It happens sometimes. It happens sometimes. Maybe we'll come up with a funny name for it someday. (laughs) Someday. Yeah. Not today, though. Not today. (laughs) Brain broken. Brain is... Well, we can't think of it in October. That's the reason we do these episodes. Our brains are melty. (laughs) Yeah. So I've made like a shorthand list of some things that I know that we can talk about. Okay, great. Um, And we'll see what we'll see what comes of it. Um, But I think the first thing that both of us were just excited to talk about because there's so much to say is this impeccable album that Woods just put out. Oh it's gosh. always Woods. It's always Woods. We said it. It's always Coming Woods. Coming back out of the woodwork, <laughs> always. Uh, and this is so good. I mean, we've talked... I feel like every time Woods has like put things out in the last like year or two, we've been really into all of it except for one, one song I found underwhelming. And all the rest mm-hmm. of it, I was like, this is all great. Like, who is this character? And this is perfect. Like this album is so good. Yeah, to a to- totally like different degree of what he's done before. I think. I mean, I don't know. I'm not like a Woods expert, but it's really good. It's very good. Um, to explain and to put us on some kind of track, the album is called "Only Lovers Left." Yes. It's a six track EP, three English songs, three Korean songs. Yes. It came out October 5th and it's his third mini album. I did wonder, I wonder if Only Lovers Left is uh, inspired by Only Lovers Left Alive, that amazing vampire movie with Tilda Swinton and Mm. Tom Hiddleston. Because the cover is kind of like, I don't know, the cover and like uh, some of the aesthetics of the music video, uh, felt vampire-y to me, but it's not like an overt theme. Um, the album itself tells the story of a relationship, like from the beginning of like getting the butterflies and then like the, the feelings souring and eventually like ending in this breakup. But I have to say, so the lead title is called waiting and I just need to like put out a content warning for the music video because I watched the music video first. It was like suggested to me because YouTube knows I like Woods. So I watched it and in the music video, Woods is suicidal over this breakup. Like he cannot get over the loss of this relationship. And the mid- the video ends with the screen going black and the sound of a gunshot. So it's very, very, <laughs> very upsetting. I really, really did not enjoy watching it. There's no like choreography or anything. Like it's just a story music video of him being really angsty. 
So I just like want everyone to know that that's what you're getting into into when you watch that music video. She told me not to watch it, and so I haven't. Yes, haven't seen it. It's blissfully not, unaware. It's totally un. In my opinion, it's very unnecessary for enjoying the song. I mean, the, I just watched a stage where there was sexy mask girls yeah. and sexy choreography, and I was like, great, perfect. The stage this is, is all amazing. I Woods always has co-ed backup dancers, and the there's like a great partner dance. Half of the choreography. It requires a stool. Um, the like, even when nobody's dancing with him, like the backup dancers are dancing with each other. It's really, really fun. Um, like the choreo is super sexy, and the song is very groovy. Um, it doesn't sound like it's not like a heart wrenching ballad. It's very groovy. Um, the whole album has like so much funk guitar and like thick bass in it. Um, but every single song I thought had a really good like personality individual personality. it's so i've been trying so hard to like find ways to describe this album all week because i've like forced it on everyone in my life like everyone in my work group chat had to listen to the woods album like my husband had to listen to the woods album i am like forcing it on people um but like trying to describe it is really difficult because it all feels really familiar like yes. all of the songs feel Really, really familiar. Yes. But also, I haven't heard them before. I felt the same way about the Dua Lipa future, future nostalgia is, album, nostalgia mm-hmm. album, where it was like every song felt like, oh, I know this song, yes. but like I don't because it's a new song, and that's what this Woods album feels like. And my coworkers very nicely described it as like that it's like better than the weekend, but like. Uh, well, wait, wait, hold on. What was the wor- the words they used to describe it? The because I want to talk about Chaser mostly yeah, because yeah, yeah. Chaser is the moment. But that the guitar licks in Chaser or whatever it reminds them of a version of Michael Jackson that people are nostalgic for that never actually existed. Oh, like this kind of all encompassing like sound mm-hmm. that like people are trying to recreate even though it like never actually happened like i don't know the chaser guys the chaser it's just what a song chaser. i mean oh excuse me the, the chaser, chaser is the infinite, that infinite song. song i think yeah chaser <laughs> just chaser <laughs> oh my god that song is the moment that song is so so (laughs) beautiful uh every time it starts my brain does a double take because every time it starts i think is this a duet because his voice is so high and clear on those opening notes that for the first like ah i think it's a woman (laughs) like and then i remember like what it is and i know that it's not but his voice in this whole album totally soars. He is such, so good. such a good range. And his he has like one of the most even voices, I feel like, through his range. Like his chest voice is just as strong as his head voice. And like going back and forth between them, you like don't even notice the difference. Because all of the notes are hit with the same amount of power and yeah. skill. Yeah. Because like waiting starts on that, why you made me waiting. Mm-hmm. But then the chorus is, oh, you baby crazy. Like, oh, go th- go through all of it. Yeah. And every, oh my God, it's so good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Chaser had, it definitely, I think most of it, actually, uh, I don't know. I love the way that you said all of it felt so familiar because that is absolutely true. Um, I really want to talk about Sour Candy because yes, that please. song is uh amazing and also there is like the the like beginning little like high pitched falsetto of it is something else like right is i still can't figure out what sour candy is but sour candy is something sour candy is something and sour candy is also (laughs) amazing um yes. woods mentioned on a radio what a show fun one. he went with he went on a radio show with wendy and he said that she inspired the song after they had had a casual conversation about sour candy 
All right. And I don't know if he was just flattering her because he was on her show or if that's true. (laughs) Um, But he does have lyric and composer credits on all six tracks of this song uh, or all six tracks of this album, along with uh, Nathan, the producer slash rapper from K-pop star season three that came up in our K-pop star episode because the two of them and Jamie are in a crew called Mola. And all Mola fits crew. together. It always fits together. But this album we haven't mentioned. Did you say three of them are in English and three of them are in Korean? Yes. Okay. Yes. And the, and three... the three English songs were uh, co-produced, written by uh, the Aristocrats, who most recently wrote "Exo Don't Fight the Feeling" with Kenzie. Um, and they've also written a bunch of SF9 songs. When I was like scanning through their. Um, discography but yeah interesting half and half and honestly i listened to the album 47 times before it actually clicked that i was like hey shit i didn't some realize. of these songs are entirely in english i did not <laughs> same same <laughs> i fully didn't until today today i learned <laughs> that three of those songs were fully in, in i english. realized it when I was driving to Target the other day and I sang, I think it was Kiss of Fire, I was singing the whole song and I was like, wait a second, I'm singing the whole song because <laughs> I know all the lyrics because it is it's an English all song. In English. <laughs> yeah. But I didn't get it. I didn't, I didn't realize either. Um, Sour Candy is one of the Korean songs. Um, the What are the English songs? Multiply. Thinking About You and Kiss of Fire yes. are, I think, the English ones, Correct. if I'm remembering correctly. I think that you're right. And then Sour yes. Candy. Because Chaser is Korean for sure. Sour Candy, Chaser, and Waiting are Korean. Yes. Um, well, that and with like right. a little sprinkling of English, as they always sure. do. Um, but yeah, Sour Candy has like such a Korean... The, the way you were saying that like they all sounded familiar. That one also... I don't know what this quality is that Woods has, but Sour Candy is the one that made me think of it, like when I was first listening to the album. And maybe it's just because the first thing of his that really caught us was that like super hardcore cowboy agenda whistle song. Yeah, But I always associate Woods and like his, I feel like he has a like twangy quality to his music. Like it's not country. like he has a country boy soul yes. somehow, or like a rockabilly <laughs> vibe, or like so he. I don't know. It feels like southern. <laughs> Cause yeah, sour candy is like it's a bouncy, like fun, like you could argue like early R and B song, but it has like gospel organs Mm -hmm. like fucking rocking in it the whole time yeah and i think there's something about the quality of like the guitar licks that he uses in his songs too like maybe that's what leads me more toward like this country feeling i can't really put my finger on it but sour candy is what made me think of it and then there's like i feel almost feel like the chaser does not in the sense that it's a country song but just in this almost like like 80s pop country yeah. The way that like Kai's like uh, ride or die feels oh my God. like that kind of like huge, like emotional abyss, like 80s yeah. song, you know? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Wow. It's really just, it's really something. Mm-hmm. It's really something. Yeah. It's such a good album. It really I don't is, even know it's what such to a good say. Album. It's just, I like, just very say, good. Like, the whole thing, I think, is like a very well thought out piece because you have multiply is the first song and it's like kind of it that one's all in english and it's this like fun bubbly like almost justin bieber style like gosh i just like love you so much or like it's about the first kiss and then like having this like butterfly crush and then thinking about you again like we're still having a fun time but it's kind of groovier i feel like thinking about you is the most like western sounding one maybe Mm. Mm, that's arguable sour candy is just like funky and like kind of sexy and fun then kiss of fire starts getting like very dramatic so like maybe like oh you're like burning with the passion and relationship with this person (laughs) then chaser is where you get like super like longing and now we're starting to break things up and then it all culminates in waiting which is all about the breakup so it just like really flows so nicely It all really flows so nicely. Yeah, it does. It flows very nicely. Um, Kiss of Fire 
I just suddenly remembered that I had this thought that like, I wish that Kiss of Fire was a Monster X song. Like, it's a very good song, and I Woods is killing it, but something about its, like, whole vibe. I'm just like, oh my god. You're Monster waiting X. for Juani to absolutely... come in and be like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I just feel like I could picture it for them. It, yeah. Like, because it feels like the most, like, boy groupy of the songs also. Totally. Like, this is a K-pop album because it is. But also, it doesn't quite have that same... Most of the songs don't quite have that same unquantifiable K-pop vibe about them. Yes. I agree. <laughs> I agree. A lot of them, I thought, sound... Like, I mean, modern is the wrong word because K-pop is not not modern uh i guess western is the word that i'm looking for i feel like the whole yeah like all of the songs i guess maybe follow more of like a western song structure like they don't seem to have that major shift that most yeah. k-pop songs do yeah i would agree mm -hmm. that's i think again why i've also been forcing it so hard on all on of other the people, people in my yeah. life is that i feel like it's agreeable to their palettes in that way like it will feel familiar um but yeah my husband was like saying that it's just very interesting how k-pop is able to like then this album in particular and key's album too he said is able to take like old older sounds mm -hmm. that like in the 80s if you actually listen to them like kind of sounded like shit like the equipment was like not as good and like whatever and like taking all the best elements of like pop music from 30 years ago and like applying it to a more modern sensibility and that it's just like good and it works yes and it's nice okay i totally agree and that makes me think of the other song like the other new thing that I have been obsessed with and I know you didn't really like it right away but I listen to Madonna by Luna every day I like wake up with okay. that song stuck in my head all right and I feel like because I listen to it multiple times a day Luna from FX released a single it's called Madonna uh -huh. and I love it and I loved it immediately I watched the music video and I was like yes everything about it I loved it so much and I sent it to Shannon and she was like I don't know there are parts of this I like <laughs> parts of it I really don't maybe it will grow on me and I was like that's fair it's kind of a Frankenstein song but as mm. I listen to it repeatedly every day <laughs> I have been able to articulate what I think I really like about it and one all right let's hear it first of all the song is about Madonna it's like when I grow up I want to be like Madonna I want to vogue how I want to and the whole song is about like do it like Madonna um mm -hmm. and uh I think that the way the song shifts and the song has like three distinct shifts. It has like the main chorus and then like this verse and then the pre-chorus. And uh, the verse is very different from the chorus. It like start, it opens with the chorus and then it drops down into the low beat of like Donna, Madonna, Madonna, Donna, Madonna, Madonna. <laughs> and I think first of all, it's a very good tribute to Madonna. Like I think okay, each yeah, yeah, part, yeah, it is. each of the three parts does like a great homage to a different era of Madonna, which is genius to whoever wrote that song. Is it Kenzie? I don't know, um, but it's just a guess. <laughs> Um, but secondly, I also think, and this kind of popped into my head when I was listening to Savage, but this is a song that I, it's, I described it as Frankenstein at first, but I really think that the three parts really go. It reminds me of the like major shifts of like a second generation K-pop song or something like that just felt so quintessentially K-pop to me because I felt like I could... I can hear the common threads in each section. Like each section is very distinct and they do not, they could easily belong to three different songs, but I feel like I can really hear how they fit into one another and how they like complement each other. And I just think it's a really, really fun song. And the like fashion and looks and like the choreography and all in the music video is phenomenal. Luna is beautiful and she sounds so good. I definitely want to talk Luke's in a second, but I looked it up while you were talking. This song was written by a Dutch music producer named Marcus Van Wattem. Okay, great. And he wrote some songs for David Guetta and a 
2013 Britney Spears song called It Should Be Easy. So there's his great uh, credibility. But had to look it up. Well, I feel like a Dutch songwriter is like a good person to write an homage to Madonna. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> like For sure. I don't know. All those Scandinavian um, songwriters. Yeah. But the music video, yeah, it has very great looks. I love the bead hat. I love the hat hat. The, like, wide yeah. brimmed, tall, like, hat hat with the, like, see-through sleeves. Yeah, yeah. Little number. I don't know how I feel about the, like, garbage. That is odd, but I like loop. that it comes off. Like, it's two pieces. Yeah, it's interesting, and the set they chose to shoot it in, like, really helps. Mm-hmm. Like, with its weirdness. Yeah, I really love the move, the, like, move she does. <laughs> in the- yeah. It's great. The little shoulder move. There's also a whole, the wet, the rain. Yeah, she does a lot of wet There's a whole wet part. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, No, uh, good for you, no SM, Luna. I'm glad you're like. Oh, that's right. She's not with SM anymore. Of course, it's not a Kenzie song. Yeah. But I'm glad, you know, it seems like she's, you know, doing what she wants to. And I was excited. Like I told you, I was excited that she was like returning to her weird FX roots Mm -hmm. and making like a dance song because I feel like her last two solo releases were like trying very hard to be like a sultry, sexy R&B singer. And not that she's not a good singer, but like, I don't know, she's more dynamic as a performer, Mm -hmm. dancey idol type, you know? I agree. She was trying to do that, like, American Apparel, Instagram, fuzzy filter, like, underpants, rainy, like, oh, I'm a cool girl. Mm. Like, that whole aesthetic. This is more fun. This is more FX Luna, I think. Well, I love it. I think it's great. And I wake up every day with it stuck in my head. And I kind of, like, sing it to myself all day. (laughs) Great. I think that's great. Um, okay, let's see what else is on our list. Oh, well, um, I did mention Espa Savage. So that's a news item that I just saw. Sure. They just set a record. Um, what was it? Oh, so far, they, they're they the fourth highest first week sales of any girl group less than a year after debut. And the second mm-hmm. highest album sales of a girl group from 2021 so far. And they just released their first mini album. So we were just complaining in our girl groups episode about how Espa had only released a couple singles. And now they have, I believe it's a six track EP, um, which I have not listened to. I didn't know it was an EP until today. Um, I only saw (laughs) Savage and I watched the music video and I also watched like the special clip performance because I wanted to see all of the choreography. And I watched the music video twice because I was like, maybe I didn't get this song the first time. And at that point, it was like the third or fourth time I'd seen it. And I was like, or like that I had watched some iteration of it. And I was like, no, I just don't get it every time. Mm. Like, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't hate the song. I was expecting like when I woke up and saw lots of, you know, the discourse again and people were saying sticker again and making things making jokes again about sm sound being ruined i was like waiting to just like have my ears assaulted but honestly i think my ears were bored and that's Mm -hmm. what's more upsetting to me is like i don't even think the song is bad it just doesn't go anywhere and i think that sucks that it doesn't go anywhere like they're all really good singers i love the bridgey part where they sing i love you to the new yes. ai girl yeah 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 and that's the that's my favorite part but the rest of the song is just like blah 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 like no more fun it's I mean, or if you want to be creepy, be creepy. Like, I don't know. I just feel like I'm sad that the song doesn't, I feel like it doesn't go anywhere and that bums me out. Mm -hmm. That's, I think that's fair. The verses I think are very, they do fall very, like, I feel like every time they rap, it falls so flat to me that I just like really 
I feel like it dampens every other part of the song because like you said, they are really good singers and each one of them does sing at a certain point. And there are just like sticker, a lot of the sung parts I, I like, there are like parts Mm. of the pieces that are sung that are really (laughs) nice, especially that cartoon part where the sun goddess comes down and they all sing (laughs) this nice bridge. Like where's the rest of that song? Right. And like the first, like I, I told this to you when I watched it, I was like, I literally held my head in my hands and was like, is this what SM just sounds like now? Mm hmm. But I don't know. I haven't listened to the to rest cope of the with EP. If it is. So. Yeah, I'm thinking, I'm hoping that this EP will come through for me because I know like the other girls like featuring on stuff. Like I feel like Winter is featured on things mm-hmm. and like they can like sing ballads and like, I don't know. So I, I shouldn't be talking because I haven't listened to the album, but I'm it's I'm excited that people like it. I'm like, it's it's baffling that it's number one on Melon, but like I'm glad that people like it because these fucking the last two all the other SM girl groups in between since Girls Generation, poor Red Velvet and FX have had I'm had rough, rough goes of it. Yeah. So I'm happy that people like Espa. I agree. I'm happy they like it. Yes. But I'm a little bewildered by I it. I am very shocked and confused that it is number one, but I am glad that they're successful out the gate. So good for them, and I hope they can keep it up. Yeah. And yeah, I they're I mean, they're all so beautiful and but the music video is I, I don't know, but I did, oh, well, maybe I can find it. Let me try to find the quote, but I saw one of them explaining the, the other cartoon or the cartoon, not the AI. Yeah. Or explaining. I wish all the AIs looked like that cartoon. Yeah. Cause that cartoon actually does look like the member with the Bob. Yeah. And are we to believe, I think we're Okay. I, I, no, I, I don't even want to say this on the podcast because I'm going to say it and then we're going to get 57 emails. Oh, telling you what the answer is. Explaining what it is. <laughs> but like the fifth one that showed up, like lots of people have lots of theories about like who that fifth one is or whatever it is. Mm. And like one of them is that it is Timmy, <laughs> like the Super <laughs> M, the Super M puppet master version oh of Timmy. I would love it if Timmy had like a female form, like in Kwangya or something. I think that would be great. Talk about breaking gender boundaries. That's what his solo career has been all about. Okay, hold on. I'm going to find the quote. Okay. We're getting here. Poets of the universe. Where's the whole quote? Poets of the universe. Oh, God. Yeah, someone was explaining it. Okay, yes. So the stories of the SM universe in Kwangya will be told by Espa. They are the poets of the SM universe. They explained. So if you want to think of them in like a, I don't know, Greek chorus yeah, kind they're of like way the, or something. The muses and they're going yes. to sing <laughs> the stories of all the other groups. Yeah, that's what we're, that's what they've said. <laughs> But yeah, I don't know what the fifth one is. It's like a different thing. And I was like, I know we said in the Girl Groups episode also that we were disappointed that Black Mamba didn't have the AI girls in it. Yeah. But Savage does have all four of them them. trying to do a dance with Aespa. They look terrible. And also it really bothers me that they like all have the same face like Barbie dolls. Mm -hmm. Like. The four members don't look the same. Why are there I- AIs just like different, different hairs? Yeah. <laughs> and like... all of the AIs look the same and none of them look even remotely like the girls themselves. And I was like, I thought right. these were supposed to be their like alter egos or something. Like they, I, I thought they were supposed to be modeled off of them. And yeah. having the AI do the choreography right next to the girls makes the AI look so bad. Like it is just yeah. like I, I bet it wouldn't have looked that bad if it was just all of the AIs. But then, like, when you see them next to, like, next a to real human people. who's, like, doing it very crisply, it ju- all it does is highlight the, like, the, like, lag <laughs> in the yeah. animation. You know what I mean? They're, they seem, like, offbeat. <laughs> they do. Uh, I don't know. Whatever. 
But Kwanya. here's a good segue into the next things I wanted to talk about, which is that Jew Honey loves Espa. He does. So, I mean. He does. We want it. Come on. Show me the way. Cross the mall. Yeah. Put it. My mama. My mama. My mama. My mama. Espa. I didn't pull it. She can't look. You want it. Could it. Jew Honey. Go. Most of it. Go. Pina. My mama. Saram. Do. Go. More. Do. 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 Well, all of Korea does apparently because it's number one. Yeah, right. Right. We're the only I'm... assholes over here being like, what's going on? <laughs> I want to like it. Please believe. I want to like it. I'm gonna I listen to the hope. EP. I'm gonna listen I... to it. I'll I put mean, it on while I make dinner later today. Yeah, I'm sure that there will be good songs on it. Same as we were talking about NCT. There are always good songs on the album. There's always good B-sides. But anyway, mon- I wanted to talk- I have a list of like Monster, Monster X things I need to address. And the first one is like, I have a few questions for Mom Bebe. Like, I am actually asking to get 50 emails right now because I don't understand. From what I have gathered from Instagram and TikTok and Tumblr, there are multiple like radio shows currently hosted by Monsta X's on Now. Mm. And I don't think Now is a YouTube channel. Is it an app? Like I truly don't know what this is. I think the one that Honey and Kihyun host is called Midnight Idol, but also sometimes Minhyuk is there and Changkyun is there sometimes and so is Hyungwon, so like I am confused. Is it now the same thing that Mino Mino's has doing? Ch- yes, again. Also, would like to watch that. Yeah, is that? I an don't know where radio? these things are. I don't know. Is it an app I need to subscribe to? Because I will. I'm just. I don't know how to watch these things. Oh yeah, but maybe it's a paid app like time. Bubble. Or- no, but it's radio. Mm. Oh, but I guess you can pay for radio. I don't know. I, really I don't, don't know. know. So if anybody knows how I can watch these things. That would be so great because I see these hilarious clips of like honey screaming Espa songs or like fun things happening or like the other day. Here's the other thing I needed to ask. The other day I was scrolling through my Instagram. Here's the stuff you like page. And I saw this video of Minhyuk. And he was on the radio show and I think a song was playing or something because he like wasn't talking. He was just like existing, but he looked so beautiful. I couldn't even believe it. And I was like, I have to send this to Angelico right now because this is so amazing. And when I went to send it, Instagram fucking refreshed and I lost it. And then I spent literal hours trying to find it again and the closest that i got is that it happened on the september 15th show he's wearing like a camel colored shirt if anyone can find this clip like he's not talking he's just vibing he looks beautiful but also this was the same night and i was gonna send it to you if you wanted to like react to it on the show and i'll plug the sound in oh god but on that same night minhyuk screamed at the mom bebe for being assholes in the comments and it is it's it it's a lot. Ooh. But also great. Okay, while you were describing the cl- <laughs> the video that you lost, I did a quick Google and it is a neighbor now radio show. But and it airs like uh it's called Idol Radio. Right? And it airs on it's an NBC program. But I don't know like how we could listen or watch it. Yeah, I don't know how people are watching it. Yeah. But it seems like different idols host it for like a certain period of time. Okay. Okay. Well, there's Monsta's hosting it right now and they're acting wild. All right. So I'm going to open this. But I sent you this video. And for context, just so you can understand what's happening, he was talking to a a mom bebe who is a teacher. And she was talking about how she's having a hard time right now. Mm -hmm. And people in the comments started being like, she's being on the call too long. She's taking up too much time. And then started swearing at her. 
and he loses his goddamn fucking mind and it's like i will talk to uh, like stop it stop being mean it's really crazy he like really yells it's great you gotta see it oh wow okay here we go wait i have to unmute wait start from the beginning oh 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 my god, the switch! I <laughs> 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 oh my god, the ending! Oh. When he yells very like at the very end and then he just goes <laughs> like smiles. Oh my god. That's terrifying. Um I would never ever ever want to make him so angry. Oh my god, I would be so I would like be so ashamed if I ever I know. evoked his ire in that way. <laughs> oh my God. I love when idols like snap on people like that. It's my favorite. Wow. Man, yuck. It's so fiery. <laughs> so fiery. So fiery. Um, but the next, like I, so another sweet video that I saw is that it was Honey's birthday recently. And on his little birthday V live, he was eating this little meal and then they played him a video that was Shonu being like, I made this meal for you. Happy birthday. And then he just cried and cried and ate his food. And it warmed my heart so much. But I learned a new thing about Shonu's military service today, again, from this radio show because of something that Ki Hyun said. And I think you might like actually die when you find out what it is. Oh, no. So you want to know what Shonu's military job is? I mean, yes, but give me a moment to compose myself, to brace myself. All right. I'm braced. He's a daycare teacher. No! <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Pacing back and forth. <laughs> all right. Are you back? Are you all right? That's so much worse than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> I know. I can't even believe. I can't even believe. Also, the I I also am like flabbergasted that that's a military job. I know, like you right? You went to the military to be a daycare teacher. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, meanwhile, Mino is jumping out of planes. <laughs> I know, but Shonu is blind. That's true. So he had he has, to take. Oh, that's true. That's true. That's true. That's why he's not doing yeah, active yeah. duties because he can't see. Oh all. yeah, because he has to do the. He has to be in there longer, right? Because he's yeah. doing the like com- the service. The service. Yes. Side. Oh, I guess that makes sense. That wow, that's interesting. Hmm. I wonder what it's like to live in a country where the military serves. <laughs> The people. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Wild. <laughs> um, but anyway, I just needed you to know that because it's too it's so much to know, but oh my god. That's really gonna like haunt my dreams. <laughs> <laughs> god, I want photo oh, I need all the other teachers. Like, come on, ladies, sneak some yeah. photos for me. <laughs> Um, the world yeah. needs it. The we world need it. it. Speaking of but the Monster X related things that the world needs now, <laughs> I saw a tweet the other day 
It was from like some article of one of the girls of Squid Game, and she talked about how whenever she's feeling sad, she looks at a picture of Wanho's butt. <laughs> oh, I'm so hard. sorry to break it to you, but that is a meme. That no, whole thing it's of fake. the girl from the girl from Squid Game saying blank. It oh, was a meme. Everybody was just putting whatever they wanted only into it. Oh wow, I'm I sad know. that's not true. It was like this is so funny. Well, it is I funny, enjoyed but it. I, I enjoyed that a lot. Wanho did one of the uh, thirst tweet videos. Someone did recently. tweet that at him, that they look at his butt whenever he's sad. And he said that he was happy to post pictures of yeah, his butt. Yeah, and he'll post even more. Mm-hmm. And people like, were great. like, will you crush me with your thighs? And he was like, yeah. Yeah, he was like, if you need my body to feel good, then you may have it. And I was like, you can have Wanho. it. <laughs> My goodness. goodness. And yet people get all upset when he like posts naked pictures and then people write nasty comments and everyone's like, he baby, don't do that. And it's like, no, he wants these Um, nasty comments, y'all. That is why he is posting. He's doing it for you. (laughs) He's helping you. Give me a break. Those white shorts. Come on. (laughs) Come on. My last piece of Monster X news is it's not really news it doesn't have to be news i'm not pe- people will get mad at me if they say that i'm starting rumors i'm not starting rumors i'm just telling you what i saw but honey and chunga went to the same wedding like a yes! couple of days ago <laughs> but he wore a t-shirt what? he wore a black t-shirt to the wedding it was like a very tight t-shirt and he had a little like cabbie hat so like he didn't look terrible but like a t-shirt like, to a wedding just because you're famous. <laughs> I think you should step it Doesn't up. I mean, you can't put on a suit. Well, yeah, but anyway, I hope they had a fun time. Yeah, me too. I'm glad people can have weddings again. Yeah. How fun. How fun for them. <laughs> Ho- hope to have some someday. <laughs> hope to have some fun someday. That's all the Monster X news I had on my list of Monster X things. Well, I'm I needed happy to, to have Monster X news because I have been, I actually have been listening to Monster X a lot lately. Um, it's good for you. It is good for you. And their last two albums are really good. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I've just been missing them. <laughs> yeah. So I need to find out how to watch this damn radio show because that seems to be all they're doing mm-hmm. is yeah. being on the radio. Yeah, well, so maybe let me watch they it. will be able to have Wanho on their radio station because oh maybe man, that would be wild. We could start getting some Monster X interactions. I had a crazy thought, and I'll just say just it out putting loud it out because there because sometimes things come true when we say them out. I know loud. I was about <laughs> to say that my thing that I thought was maybe crazy, but like I don't know, maybe crazier things have happened. Like, wouldn't it be so crazy if, like, say, like Wanho opened at the Monster X show in <gasps> February? Like, wouldn't that be so cool if, oh like, God, something like that happened? That like, if they could just be like, "Tee, it's." It's two shows. He's a solo. Oh, artist. my God. And you know what? Like, Because we won't have Shonu and we we'll need something. And yeah. wouldn't it just be like too convenient to have Wanho sub in for Shonu during the show? I'm just I'm saying. I'm just saying. He would be right there could. already. And like they could perform so many songs from that album that he was actually still on. But like right. wasn't there for because they never got to perform those yeah. on account of the coronavirus. Mm. Would be mm. nice. Would be nice. Wouldn't it be um, nice? But yeah, things do always come true on the show. If you didn't hear or not come true, we just like summon news, <laughs> and we don't mean to. But if you didn't see. Helen from the Wonder Girls announced that she was pregnant like the day after we put our Wonder Girls. No, the same out. day. The day we put out our episode, she announced that she was pregnant. So And we gave her the benefit of the doubt at the end of the episode. We were like, she doesn't have kids yet. She might put out music soon. Yep. Like we even gave her space, but yeah, nope. Yeah. <laughs> but nope. She's no having a baby. All around. So congratulations to Halem. That makes two Wonder Girl mamas. Wonder moms. Yeah, Wonder Moms. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, let's see what's on my list. 
The next thing on my piece of news is I'm just so excited about it. You guys, Yana cut her hair. <laughs> she has not had a bob since 2014. Do you understand how long I have waited for this? She has had long hair for so long. Wait, I haven't seen her haircut. I'm pulling up. Go look Instagram. at her Instagram. It's fucking cute. <laughs> it's very blunt. It's very thick because like she cut so much hair off. I like it. I think it looks great. It's like a sandy brown color. Ooh. My computer's being slow. Okay, it's okay. We'll wait for the grand reveal. Yana haircut. Oh my God. Cute. <laughs> Isn't it so cute? Yes. She looks great. She looks. Mm, I don't know if it's. She doesn't look younger. She kind of, mm, I don't know. She looks great. I love it. She looks great. It's just great. Wow. Great. Good job, Hiana. I love it. I've, I've waited so long <laughs> for her to cut her hair off again, and it's super cute. It's so cute. So, yay. Love a haircut moment. New era of Hiana. She's 30 now and she cut her hair off. Yeah. Yeah. She's an adult. <laughs> Growing up, cutting her I hair. It. I love it. it looks um good. yeah. Okay, this next piece of news I just like had to address. It's like not too recent. It happened 2 weeks ago, but because we supported so hard on this show, I was very sad to learn that our favorite Soham officially left Kunakun two weeks ago. Um, which, like, essentially, people are saying basically means that Kunakun is over. Because he was kind of the only one, like, holding it all together. Mm-hmm. And it's just a bummer, because, like, in 2018, like, we thought they were done, and they rose from the ashes, and we were so excited. Mm-hmm. But, like, I don't know, they were at a time... Those, these tiny bullshit companies, they really, it's yeah. a bummer. It's just a bummer when, like, cool, talented people are at a place that just, like, doesn't have any money. Mm-hmm. It sucks. Yeah. <sighs> I know. This they is, were so tall. They were so tall. They were, like, 90% Ooh. leg. Their shortest member is, like, 5'11", or maybe 5'10", whatever. Their shortest member is taller than, like, all of Ace. Um, (laughs) I don't know if that's true. That's, that's just a joke. Don't at me. Um, (laughs) but this is very, very sad news to me. I did not know this before you mentioned it right before we started recording and you read me your list and I was very, very (laughs) sad. Um, because I really like, we, I like Kuna Kun. I know. Their name is weird, but their songs are fun and they're all so long. Yeah, <sighs> kinda good. I mean, I would ho- hope that they would move on to bigger and better things, but you know, we know how difficult that can be. So I guess yeah. we'll just have to wait and see. I mean, I guess the remaining members could like rebrand themselves as a new, different group if they wanted to. Sure, but I don't know. I guess only time will tell. I don't know, but that makes me sad. Yeah, that's a bummer. Makes me sad. Bummer. Um, well, yeah, you have another piece I'm, of uh, another thing on your list. It's a bummer too. Bummer news, which is that June and Chan from Ace have COVID nineteen. Terrible news. I know it's really sad. I mean, at least they are like not in the middle of promotions or something. But like, yuck, boo, yeah. no fun. I hope they don't lose their taste and smell. Oh, I know. Yeah, I hope that they... I mean, there's been all kinds... Oh, yeah. We don't have to tell. Let's not go there. Um, <laughs> uh, that's, that's... Anyway, <laughs> that's very bad news. And I hope that they can make a quick and easy recovery. Yeah, me too. Mm-hmm. Um, At least June doesn't have to go into the military right away, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> Oh my god, I just remembered that Ace is all in the military. They know, there's Wait. only, that means only Byung Kwan <laughs> is like out and about right now. Yeah, because Wow and oh Dong no. are in the military.
military. No, I'm sure he's also quarantined as hell. Probably because like, he's spending time to go with them. anywhere. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Oh, that sucks. For the best, but um, total topic change. But I and we can back off this and cut it out if you have no thoughts. But seventeen comeback. I know it's still like a month away, but it like I don't know. It's there's a lot happening and what they've given us so far okay i am not up to date with what we have been given so far i think i've seen oops let me just pull up their instagram right now yeah go right ahead um i watched the like concept teaser or whatever where they like set the word boyhood on fire and like me right? shaves and I was like this is too on the nose you guys we've already done like you guys are already grown like we have been yelling mm. about how grown you are for like a year now a very long time so like yeah. it seems silly to do this now and also like we could be more subtle about it but it's fine <laughs> Oh, wow. They are giving us so many, so many photos. The only other things that I've seen is this, like, beautiful Ace-inspired mermaid uh, shoot from the vocal unit. But it's so different. Like, the vocal unit is, like, in, like, that Ace shoot we liked. Mm -hmm. Like, we joked in our group chat, like, I don't approve of plagiarism, (laughs) but I do, like, boy mermaid concept yes. so not mad and jonghan has like, extensions all... that are like all the way down to his waist in this no yeah, they're just they're down so... to his nips but they're like long and flowy and like yeah but only the vocal unit looks like beautiful mermen like vampires and yet the and the rap line has fucking f- cut faces yeah yeah the rap line is like beat up motorcycle guys the vocal unit is like washed up mermen, not washed up as in like they've come to shore, not as in like they're washed up. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and then the dance team are like suit guys, sexy suit guys. Oh, wow. Look at Ming Hao in this corset. Oh, my God. He looks incredible. Oh, I love that. Oh, oh I love that God, so this much. Turtleneck. Yeah, the turtleneck and the like, that's literally a bodice. It really is. But do they striped bodice? It is. Wow. But are they like? Are they like heist spies? That's what it reads to me. Yeah. Yeah. It reads as heist to me as well. Um, But yeah, they okay. So the and then there's like three, a four, five, six other sets of photos. Like I know. God, this is a lot of. It's so many photos, and the album is not out for like a whole another month. I feel like Jesus Christ. And the very first set of photos that they put out had like everybody showing skin, like Vernon. Okay, ten days, but still fine. (laughs) Vern, but they started promoting this on like October first. No, September September 23rd. 23rd. (laughs) We pulled that up at the exact But anyway, Vernon, naked on the bed. Naked. Uh, Excuse you. He's not naked. He's wearing a pajama top, but it's not buttoned. So scandalous. I mean, I don't disapprove, but I am shocked. (laughs) And then like Coop's My son Boo's blue hair. His like steely blue hair. It looks great. He also looks very grown up and everyone's being like, ooh, excuse me, Boo Sung Kwan. Like, that is my son you are speaking about. But he does look beautiful. He looks (laughs) beautiful. He does look beautiful, as Vernon would say. Yes. Um, But like... Coops and Jonghan again with this like matching blonde bob, which I do really love <laughs> Jonghan's hair right now. June I looks so the... broad in this picture. I remember seeing this oh on my, my God. feed and I was that like, gas sweater the... picture. Gas. You better put those away. Gas. Look at how put broad he is. Away. I can't. He's like <laughs> two feet across. That's like two. It looks that crazy. is like 24 inches from shoulder to shoulder. But I was going to say, I wonder if the reason why the Bob still match is because all 13 of them are in these pictures, but we know the China line boys went home to China yes. and have been in China and will not be in this comeback. Yes. So I wonder what they'll actually look like when they start promoting, because I think they had to shoot all this before those guys left. Mm-hmm. Right. There's like no telling when they shot all of these things. So who knows what their hair looks like? Who knows? 
We never know. The hair timelines are always mystery. a mystery. I know. Anyway, what a good time. Joshua's we'll have. being a slut. Yeah, what? A, put your shirt down. Look at him putting his hand <laughs> underneath his own shirt. No, stop in- it. Uh, appropriate. So inappropriate. Many times when I have been watching the, I just thought of this because I saw Dino's face. Sometimes Woods looks like Dino to me. Oh my God. Yeah, I totally could see that. I feel like Dino's face, Dino's head is wider, but like, I think they have similar yes. like eyes. Like when you see the, yeah, yeah, yeah. From like certain angles. Look at Jong Han in this beret. I love it. It's so floppy. He looks so classy. <laughs> Yeah, who knows what they're going to look like. Yes, because our China Line boys went back home because they have not been able to see their families for a long time. So they went home specifically to see their families and then also to do like some schedules in China. Um, According to the pictures that Jenna posted in the group chat this morning, they went to Disneyland together yesterday. Oh, yes. I saw that. She (laughs) said Ming Hao took June to Disneyland. (laughs) That's very cute. They're very, very cute. cute. They're very cute. And I will miss them at the comeback, but being home is way better than that. And I'm sure it had been like almost two years. So please go be home. Yes. Yes. I That's how I felt too. I was like disappointed because obviously Ming Hao is the one I usually watch. But obviously I'm excited for him to go home and see his mama. Speaking of China lines, I saw that Lei is putting something out soon. SM was posting Ooh. about it. Let me see when it's. Is Chris in jail? God, when? <laughs> Instagram, the other, like, again, my Instagram little magnifier glass page, I love it. It's like only slime videos and K pop voys. And I just like <laughs> sand cutting and like K pop boys. I love it. But I saw, <laughs> I saw, they, they were showing me Chris videos the other day and I kept Boo. posting, not interested. Get him off my timeline. I was going through my Spotify liked songs and I saw that I had liked a song by him and Lou Han and I was like, no, <laughs> I will not have him on my associated out with of my here. Spotify. Lei Zhang, when are you putting out music? I swear to God someone posted about this. I didn't dream it, did I? <laughs> <laughs> Let me look up. Lei Zhang, new music. Um, I mean, I know that he's currently on EXO. Lay drops new single. Ooh, I recognize the first and last symbol in these in this title. Ooh, um, six days ago, <clears throat> Samadhi Real Fire. Okay, they posted it on his birthday. It was like a birthday thing because it was his birthday the other day. Happy birthday, Lay. Happy birthday, Lay. This is a pre-release. Okay, so something must be coming after this. He has been looking so fine lately. Ugh, he so fine. Looks Every looks time so I see fine. gifs of him on my Tumblr, I'm just like so shook. He's like put on weight in a good way. Yeah, he's thicker. He looks good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he yeah, looks he's good. <laughs> he's still on that street dance of China show with Wang Yibo. So he's like always up on my Tumblr. Um and he looks yeah. great. Oh. You know, maybe Ooh. it's because of that show. They always eat hot There's like a segment of that show where that's literally called Let's they have eat, to eat Hot, hot, hot dogs. Together. And it's like oh, a hot whole pot. hour to say hot. Like, no, not hot dogs. <laughs> Was like, so oh, it's yeah, a dance competition and competitive, competitive eating. Hot dogs. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, hot but pot. like yes, half of it pot. is that like the team captains like shoot the shit together and they eat hot pot and they have this like absurdly large table filled with food and they just like eat for so long <laughs> and like talk about nothing. I don't know. I love it. Yeah. Love so him. as long as he's being fed. Yeah, yeah, all of happy, our favorite baby. idols to be fed. <laughs> oh, you know what else? Uh, there's so many good English songs that are coming out this year. It's really crazy. Uh, Twice, The Feels. That's another Have song. Have we not been. spoken no, about The Feels we on this show yet? Because we didn't talk about it during the Wonder Girls episode. Oh, of course. Um, but Well, it's great. It's fantastic. And it's their first I learned the dance song. by accident. <laughs> Me too. I learned because the dance so just by watching easy. it. And the... No, you got the feels. Boy, 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 you know. 
I love that song. I love it's it. It's like the, so I feel like it's much. the easiest K-pop dance that has come out in a super long yeah. time, and it's English, and I keep seeing it all over TikTok, and absolutely everyone like eats it every time they do it because it's like it's so accessible. Mm-hmm. I'm like very proud of them for yeah. this because I it's so fun, and the dance is like classic K-pop, easy to do. Yeah. It's great. And it's the song is so fun. Like the balance between like really strong vocals and like the cutesy like raps of twice is really good. And I love it. The music video is like a prom theme, which is fine. They're like all too old for prom, <laughs> but whatever. Um <laughs> but but I will say that the like bedazzled like disco cheerleader outfits that they do in the music video and they also wore on Jimmy Fallon uh stunning spectacular phenomenal <laughs> perfect i love it i love them so no notes much. no notes <laughs> <laughs> so yeah twice the feels i love that i love that um did you watch just curious did you watch the sun Kia commercial that i sent you the other day i did i didn't love it (laughs) yeah it was just like very it was just so much louder than like sunmi usually is for sure and so i was i like i'm gonna have to listen to it again um i was like i don't mind that it's a kia commercial and i love her hair color i had been wondering she looks amazing yeah i was wondering why she dyed her hair pink and it looks so pretty um and yeah, I mean, she looks great, but I don't know if I like the song. It's called Go Stop, I think. Stop Go. I think it's Go that Stop. Sounds right. I just like, I saw a bunch of tweets that were like, what? Sunmi music out of nowhere? And thought like, oh my God, did Sunmi just pull a Beyonce and drop a whole album? And I like got really excited. And then I saw it was a Kia commercial. And then I was like, oh. oh. But she, like, looks great, and it is, like, a whole music video. Yeah. And the song isn't bad, but you're right. It is a little more – it's not quite the same, like, the vibe that she has established as an artist at this yes, point. Yes, it's very different from her usual solo persona, which I had just been talking so highly about in our Wonder yeah. Girls episode. But this, like – it has, like, a futuristic theme, so it has a lot more, like, EDM, like, house techno elements to the song, which – isn't really usually like the vibe she has. Um, it's called Go or Stop. There we go. Question mark. Question yeah. mark. Um, yeah. I think, I feel like that's all, that's all I had written down to talk about. I don't know Great. if there's anything else to be I'm sparked. pretty sure that that's all that's been on my mind lately. Oh, wait. Oh, my God. What? Save the best for last. We have not talked about our dear Kim Ki Bum and his very oh my first God. solo win. Thank you. Yes, this is a perfect way to end this segment. Yes. Y'all, Ki won his first music show trophy and he had literally no idea. And he was so stunned. And it's like the most emotional first win I've watched in a while. Yeah. He's really on the verge <laughs> of tears during his encore performance, and he sa- and then still he snaps out of it. Great, and he yeah. Sings. As soon as the like meat mm. of the song kicks in, he's like, "I'm here." Mm. But it was really great to see. I saw like a fan writing about you know like what it was like to watch him win that, especially because he won against Itzy Loco with Loco. Yeah, and um, he has also talked a lot about how like this is like the fourth generation's like time, and he like always like tries to like make space for like the newer voices mm-hmm. to be heard, like Itzy and NCT, and he's like spoken about like how the like newer groups are like exciting, and he wants to like. He thinks he doesn't think second gen should be like, you know, stepping on Stomping them or whatever. On them, yeah. sure. Um he's he's not into this like, you know, s- hierarchy, I suppose, of like priorities or whatever. Um and so then I think he like really didn't expect himself to win, especially against someone like Itzy. And so it was just like, uh, and he won with his cowboy agenda look on the stage. He looked so good. Yeah. He was so tearful on his car ride home. But his, I and saw a little... And Namgung Oisu was crying too. I know. And then they both started laughing in the car like through their snot there nose was only tears receipts. because there were no tissues. <laughs> only receipts in the doors. No <laughs> tissues. 
Oh, it's so sweet. And then he and then he like went live later because he was like, I can't fucking sleep. Like, this is crazy. Because he yeah. truly had he clue like he had no idea. He really mm-hmm. didn't think he was going to win. I also think he did. I mean, we talked a little bit when his album came out about like what a labor of love it was and what a personal project it was for him and how he's like had this idea since for like 14 years, like since, you know, he was a trainee, he's always been thinking about this. And, um, so I think he like really never carried the like intention or motivation to win. Like, it seemed like this was mm. something that he was like, I'm making music and I'm like promoting the music on the music shows. Cause that's what I do. But like, I don't think he was in it to win it. You know what right. I mean? I think he was just excited to be, you know, like, yeah, just happy, not just happy to be here. <laughs> like, but you know, yeah, like, like yeah. I'm just making, I'm making this for myself. Like this is something that he's always wanted to do. So like he put, everything of himself in it and the fact that that got rewarded with a win I think also it probably added to the like emotional aspect of it because then it's like that must be so validating because then that's like this is really him and he said repeatedly that like this is his true self in this album yeah and he got his first win my key Mm -hmm. I'm so excited I just think that's so nice I'm so happy that he got recognized for this album. That is great. That is so good. It is so good. Play is lovely alongside the Woods album, like we spoke about Which also got his first music show win today or yesterday, maybe. Whatever day it was. Whatever. Like 12 hours before this recording. Yeah. (laughs) So So congratulations to our solo boys, Woods and Keith. And your great oh, solo projects. Yay. I love it. Um, well, I think that's enough uh, bullshit rambling from us. <laughs> so we'll do the actual format part of the show and be right back with a random game. All right, we are back. And the random number generator and the universe and the K-pop gods continue to be like weird and creepy. And gave us a tangentially related group today that we'd never heard of, but oops, they were so tangentially related. On multiple tangents. A- <laughs> yeah. This group is called Almeng. Mm-hmm. It was a co-ed duo who debuted on K-Pop Star 3. And both members made it to the top six and then debuted with YNB Entertainment after their k-pop star season and you know who else was at ynb entertainment kin a kin i mean come on come on guys we just said two of these things k-pop star three kanakan it's all right here <laughs> um but yes this group was cherin and lee Hyung, and they put out six singles and they had two ost appearances and a debut ep as well they uh signed and debuted under ynb but then they left ynb sub- ass- the assumption is around the same time as kunakun and the other group bestie because i think we mentioned in when we got yeah. Kunakun on the random game that ynb like ran out of money um <clears throat> and so then they signed with majesty entertainment Yeah, and their only album that they put out was called Composing of Love, Mm -hmm. and they wrote all six tracks on it. Oh, Um, Composing. That's why the S Composing of Love. Yeah. Yeah. With the sing. Right, because they're going to sing. Sure. Okay. Uh Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I get it. So their most popular music video that we found is off of that album, and the song is titled Phone in Love. And we were thinking, oh, is that like a weird translation? But the Hangul title is Pon in Lobe. So, so like, nope, that's what it's called. And we're going to find out if that means are they phoning it in? Like, is this relationship no good? Or, or is, is it this a about a phone in love? relationship where they're like always talking on the phone? <laughs> ah, is it about that sure. feeling of when you're in love and you just like want to talk to that person all the time? So you're talking to them on the phone for hours? Who knows? Let's find we'll have out. to find out. So if you would like to pull up Almeng Phone in Love and watch it with us, just press play when I say go. Three, two, one, go. Okay. Got a apartment. 
sad boy with a pillow. Hmm, he says. Oh, we get little, like, animations. She's sad, too. Oh, their phones are ringing. Split screen. Oh, no. They're so sad. They are. They're, like... <laughs> These little cartoons. Oh, okay, she. So now they're talking. He asked her on a blind date. I was able to read the Hangul fast enough. So. Oh, a okay. blind date. Wait, how can it be yeah. his blind date? If he, if she, if he had her phone number. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, so now they're they're getting ready for the date. I didn't expect her to start rapping. <laughs> Okay, so they're just like being excited about their date. Oh, I really like her collar. It has little like hands. Her outfit is very cute. It is cute. I like her little hair with that cute little curly. Yeah, and she has like a gray bob. It's a very good yeah. hair color on her. Boy. <laughs> Phone in love. I mean, they just said it. Yeah, I don't I, I I don't really know what that means. Even in this oh, context. I mean the little pillow next to her says falling in love. I wonder if it's just supposed oh, to be is like, it a, like a like play phone, on in love. Words, phone like, in love. Fall in oh, it's love. not a pillow, it's a purse. Oh, it's a purse. Fall in, phone in love. Phone in okay. love. Okay. They're falling in love over the phone. Oh, well, he said it was a blind date, right? Yeah. So they're falling in love over the phone. This is like a digital love story, I suppose. Okay. Oh, here they are. They're meeting. They're so nervous. Oh my God, this shirt with his little bow tie. Because it's an actual bow. This leather hat and chain outfit is very funny, too. Yeah, he looks like he's trying to be, like, very cool. <laughs> and yeah. he looks like he's trying to be way cooler than he really is. Oh, my God, oh, those, those glasses, glasses have an antenna. That was neat. Those... Her glasses had, like, an antenna like a car. Yeah, that was crazy. Also, her skirt is so short. Vagina oh, on no, the couch. They blew that date. They're both upset. Yeah. It did not go good. Neither of them feel like reading. Those glasses are so bananas. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this is little shirt with little tie. Like, I know, this, but that it's like open as well. And the bow oh. is just keeping it tied at the top. <laughs> oh, is oh, that what it is? She texted him anyway. Well, if they give each other another chance, then that's. rare i think in this dating age of like if you guys met through the phone and then you meet yeah. in person and it like doesn't go very well then but you, now like, they're back don't... to texting and they're happy again yeah there you go the end <laughs> not true to life wow. <laughs> no. that was wild well, that was all well, that's all ming all right um, it is weekly recommendation time, and I'm going to read this new one that I found in the Patreon recommendations. Great. Um, okay, this says, hi, I want to recommend a YouTube channel, Sienna TV, S-E-A-N-N-A, -N -N like Sean and Anna, but mm. mushed. Sina TV, which is a cute couple who are fluent in Korean, English, and Japanese, and are doing a live watch along of Going 17. And they oh. use it to Kore to teach Korean idioms and common terms and write Hangul on the screen as they go along to help with language learning. It makes all the puns so much more fun and cringy at the same time. Oh my god, how fun! 
Uh, one hidden gem in their channel is the couple's story time about meeting 2 p.m. Tekyon in a national park in the U.S. and how they ended up on Korean TV with him. A dream birthday encounter, and it makes me like Tekyon even more. That sounds fun. Oh my god, so, can you imagine just like strolling through a national <laughs> park and like Tekyon is there? <laughs> like what? I don't know what I would do. I wonder if I'd even recognize Yeah, I would. <laughs> yeah, you'd recognize him for sure. That's um, a great recommendation. I love I mean, I always I was just thinking today about using different like dramas and stuff as as a language tool. Um, because I think that's such a good way to, to learn a language oh, yeah. is to watch things in that language, obviously. Um, and so to take going 17, which is such a fun show, um, and something that like definitely when you watch the translations, you know, or when you watch it with the subtitles, you know, you're missing half of what is going on in that, in the like chaos that is 17. Um, so that's really fun. What a great recommendation. Yeah, um, and another one that I found also in the Discord that the listeners were talking about and I thought was a good rec for the episode, um, the KBS World YouTube channel has started for the whole month of October. They are uploading a new quote-unquote online concert every day, um, and these are very similar to the NBC K-pop um, stage compilations, but it's KBS's video, so they have some immortal songs. Like They have some other programs but it's just like three and four hour compilations of so far what's come out is bts iu exo nct shiny um baekhyun and then later this week 17 gfriend mamamoo day six girls generation twice like they're doing all of them so oh cool and you said this is the kbs world yeah the kbs world youtube channel great they're doing a online compilation concerts thing for october so Oh yeah, never stop online compilation concert. How fun. Do you have anything that you want to recommend? I know we just like talked about a lot of stuff that we really like, but I feel, yeah, I know the Woods album, but, um, I know like the things that I've been, I mean, I feel like I've, I've already spoken about my Rex, which would just be like, I love the Woods album. I love Luna's solo. I love Twice's, um, the feels, um, I don't even know if I've like seen, oh, I, I watched the, I did watch the ESPA. I'm looking through my history now and be like, do that mean it? no, I don't have to look. I I'm fine with these recommendations. Okay. Okay. I just want to take one second to like double down on a recommendation I made a few weeks ago, but like for real, Yumi's Cells is the nicest drama that I've ever watched in my whole life. It hurts my feelings in the most specific ways. And I cry like a dumb little baby over it. But like, it is not a sad drama. It's just about life. And it is so relatable. It just like breaks. It just like breaks me every single week with these just like very common, normal, like you're on a date with your boyfriend and you get salty about something and then it like ruins the whole night and then mm. like, uh, and like, I don't know. It just like really hurts my feelings in really specific ways because it's so relatable and so good. And Jin Young from GOT7 is on it now. So another K-pop connection. Mm. In addition to Mino being there, Jin Young's there now too. Great. It's just so good. I just need everyone to watch it because it makes my heart happy and it's the nicest. Like, it's just such a well-made drama and it like really flips like every trope on its head. Like every time you think that they're going to like get into a fight over a big dumb misunderstanding, like, no, it's handled properly, like with by adults. And like, I don't know. I just really like it. (laughs) Oh, thank God. Yeah, I love that. I love that. So anyway, that's all. Also, while I was scrolling through my YouTube history, I did find something I can recommend. Okay, what? Which is, Key performed two B-sides with, actually, no, he's done three B-sides now because uh, he's been promoting Bad Love and he did Yellow Tape and Helium first. Uh But he also just recently did Saturday Night. Shut up. Yes. I'm going to send it to you right now. Saturday Night is one of my favorite songs off of the album and uh, he did one performance of it that I have seen so far and the dance is really, really cute. It's super, super fun in like a like I don't know he just like has all of his backup dancers together with him and they're like all wearing these like kind of school uniform style 
uh, outfits. And so it feels very like high school, like dance kind of vibes. And, but it's great. It's, uh, it's so good. So key Saturday night, it was on NBC. Also, mystery solved about Saturday Night Key said on V Live that Zachary and Stacy are people that he knows. Those names oh. did not come out of anywhere. He okay, knows great. a Zachary and a Stacy, so that's why they're mystery so specific solved. because they're Got real it. people. Zachary playing a song, yeah, something sad but cool, cool but sad, cool but sad. Okay. <laughs> that was close. I love it. Um, I love right. it. That's it. Um, thanks for sticking around for an episode where we just talked about things. <laughs> we'll be back with more organized shit sometime. It Next week, sometime. probably. Yeah. Don't worry about it. <laughs> it's fine. It's totally fine. It'll happen. Yeah. So in the meantime, if you would like to find us on social media, we can be found at AMA K-pop Pod on Twitter and Instagram. Link tree slash AMA K-pop for links to our Spotify, our YouTube, our Discord, all of the places. Our Patreon. Patreon.com slash pod. Join the Patreon. We've got video Bonus content. Bonus episodes every month. Also, the opportunity to send in recommendations. Like you heard this week. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, 181 AMA Kpop 5. Voicemails. P- P.O. Box 026. I think I forgot it because I haven't said it in a while. 02696, I think. Mm-mm. P.O. Box mm-hmm. 26096. Oh, see? I let you take over and my brain said, we don't need this information anymore. <laughs> P.O. Box 26096, Los Angeles, California, 90026. There we go. If you want to send us stuff. Um, twos and sixes and nines. It is. It's confusing. It's fine. It, don't worry about it. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's it. Thank you for listening. As always, y'all are the best. And uh, we'll talk to you later. Goodbye. Bye. Jonghyun, you're our inspiration. <clears throat> My throat is scratchy after screaming about show new. <laughs> Okay. Have to be let out. <laughs> <laughs>